what are the must have apps that you need on your phone when you're looking to buy or sell real estate. Today we're gonna to look into my top five that I tell all of my clients to put on their phone. Two of them they've usually never heard of. Let's check it out. What's up guys, my name is Louis Gault. Welcome to the channel as always. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, do all that stuff. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the top five apps that I tell my clients to put on their phones, regardless of their situation, regardless of price point, and regardless if they're gonna be buying or selling. So let's check them out one by one. The first three might be more obvious to you, but the last two, a lot of people have never heard of, and I'll explain why they're so important. All right, let's check it out. So first one is the most obvious one. Everyone has it. You probably have it already on your phone. It is Zillow. So when we open up Zillow, everyone knows how to use it. You put in your search and you look for properties that match your criteria and do all the stuff. You can browse through it nice and easy. But there's a couple of things here. One really significant thing that I want to let you know about. When you start working with an agent, or even if you're looking for an agent, you hit the more tab and you hit find an agent and you can scroll down here. Obviously these people are not me. <laughs> but if you scroll down, oh look who's there, it's me. Five stars, 17 reviews. Um, so you can find agents that you're looking for in your area. You can click on them. You can read a little bit about their bio, some of the active listings they have, past sales, reviews, all that good stuff. And kind of check out everything you need to know about an agent. Um, and then you can contact them um, or you can actually add them as your agent. So when you scroll down, usually, uh, this this is uh, my wife's phone that I'm using, so she has me as her agent, how nice. Um, but you can hit um, mark as agent or request uh, as, as an agent or one of these options. Right now we're gonna renew it, so renew as your Zillow agent. Yes, add your agent. Now, what that does, is anytime I'm on the search criteria looking at homes, let's just pull up this one for instance, right here. So if I like this property and I want to see it, I can send a message, a hit message here, and it will send it to um, my agent or me in this case. So I'll send it to the agent and I can notify the agent that I'm working with that I like this place, check out the suite bathroom, if I could spell that properly, that'd be great. You know, or stuff like that, and then send it over or request a tour. So it's really, really cool. You can also favorite that, and it will tell the agent that you're working with that you have actually favorited this, and they can set up, you know, tours for the weekend or whatever it is. So it's actually a really powerful part of Zillow that a lot of people don't use. There's a lot of Zillow kind of parts that people aren't too happy with, and agents don't like, like the Zestimate, which I've talked about in the past, which is, a terrible thing um, but this is a really cool part of the app so you can link up directly with your agent send them properties request tours all from the Zillow app so Zillow definitely worth having for sure okay next up uh, compass app compass are a brokerage uh, giant uh, they started in New York and they have since um, gone all over the states so um, the thing that I like about compass is that they have coming soon. So Compass coming soon is part of their brokerage model. And it's all properties that they are putting on the market that you can only see on the Compass app. Oops, I just shook it there. Um, so you can only see it on the Compass app. You can't see these coming soon quite yet on Zillow or the MLS. So if you check this out, you know, you can put in your search criteria, but come in here, look at this, Compass coming soon. So there's a coming soon here, two bed, one bath, uh, condo a lot of the times they don't have all the pictures this one does which is great so you can go down it and see what's coming soon on the app here now um, you might be able to send this to your agent then they can reach out to the compass agent that is selling this property um, if I go to contact agent right here boom it tells me uh, up top Sarah Banger is selling this place so I can get in touch with her straight away so the uh, compass app is really cool for that. It's very kind of similar to Zillow in terms of the search functions and, and kind of all that stuff. You can zoom out, 
you can draw parameters, you can you know put in how many beds and baths, all that good stuff. But the compass coming soon is actually the really um, cool part to this app. So worth getting just to see if there's anything out there that hasn't hit Zillow yet that your agent can get ahead of and contact them and set up showings immediately when it hits the market. All right, okay, third one, HomeSnap. Again, very similar to what we've been looking at in the last two, it's more of a search kind of app, um, but this is from the MLS, and that's the big difference between Zillow and Compass. This one is coming straight from the MLS, so it's gonna be updated quicker than some of the other apps um, that we've been looking at. And again, you can search all the parameters you want to. If I go to search here, filter, then I can go through all these different things. Price points, let's go from 950 to 1.7. Let's see what's out there, here we go. And then the nice thing about this one as well is you can send it straight to your agent. So let's pull up this property here. When I scroll down it, I can see more stuff on my side because this is the agent kind of profile. But if you are just looking at this as a consumer, you might not see some of these things, but you can still send it, text it to your agent and do different things like that. The other nice one about this is when you're driving around and you hit the near me button, it shows you what is around the place and exactly what's on sale, what's been on sale and what has sold. And you can look at all these different property lines in here, check out the history of them, when they were sold, how much they sold for. Um, so really in terms of digging deep into information, this is the best app to have. HomeSnap is a great, great app. You can also look through agents, um, and you know, look at reviews and scores and stuff like that, much like we did on Zillow. But HomeSnap, uh, between HomeSnap, Compass and Zillow, that's gonna have all your search parameters covered. So everything you need is in those three apps uh, and I like using all three of them to look for different things. So let's move on. Neighborhoods. Now, neighborhoods and the next one after that are gonna be ones you've never probably heard of. Neighborhoods, when you pull it up and open it, it looks just like the other ones, right? It looks like a search profile. You can search for all these different things. But the key thing about this is that you can deep dive into the neighborhoods that you're looking at and find out some different um, information. So for instance, let's look over here. So let's look, let's see what comes up. So Skyland, the only thing about this app is sometimes these little neighborhoods disappear. So let's look at Congress Park. So I can just select that pull up and it will start to give me all the demographics about Congress Park. So if I go to read more, here are the top schools. Steck Elementary got a nine on the score, Taylor an eight, Bromwell an eight, Morey Middle School is a seven. So it'll tell you all the school scores, which are obviously important for people coming to live here. Trends, we're going to look at the medium sale price, which is 427,500. Average price per square foot is 357, and the average sold price is 628,442. Now these are important because you can kind of look at a snapshot. So how about we look at this? So this is what I like to do with this. Average price per square foot is $357 per square foot. So let's look at some of the homes sold and see if that makes sense. So let's check out this one. Here we go. So pulling up this little condo here, 298,499. It is a square foot of 1,133. So let's plug that into the calculator. 1,133 times the average price per square foot, which was 337, I believe. 337 equals 381,821. So for the average price per square foot, this particular listing is priced super low, almost $100,000 below the average price per square foot. Now, there might be stuff going on with this condo. There might be a bunch of, you know, it's been on the market for 193 days, which in uh, Denver is insane. So obviously something is going on with this condo that is keeping people um, away from it and the price has been driven down. But you see what I can do here. I can look at the average price per square foot and then look at different homes in the neighborhood and see where they're stacking. Have they priced it too high? Have they priced it too low? So without even having to go and tour homes, I can be like, oh, this is priced too high already. So it's a really, really cool app um, for stuff like that. You can dig into little sub uh, divisions as well. So Capitol Avenue isn't a neighborhood, but it is a little subdivision of the neighborhood. And you can look through here as well. It'll show you the homes for sale in this neighborhood 
and different things like that. So um, Neighborhoods is a really cool app. It takes a little minute to get used to it, but you can get some really good information from it and, and I really like it for, especially for buyers, but for sellers as well to have on there and see what the trends are in their neighborhood, see what the price per square foot is there so that they can kind of keep on top of all the trends that are happening if they were looking to sell their home. So that is Neighborhoods. All right, last one. This is the One Agent app. Now, I told the porcupine at the start, you can't really get this app on your phone unless you are an agent. So if you're a buyer or a seller, make sure your agent has this on their phone or their iPad or whatever so that they can work with you. Now, this is great because it tells you all about the numbers, all right? So say you are a buyer, say we're gonna look at a home price of $400,000. We're gonna put a down payment of 20%, whoopsie, that's 2%. So 20% down payment. Interest rate, we can plug that into whatever it is that your lender has given you. The term, if there's an HOA, we can put it in here. But So let's say there's a $250 monthly HOA and we're going to close on July 21st. So I can compute, compute that there and we are now going to look at your average monthly payment. So this is an approximate value. Obviously your lender is gonna give you the, the final numbers, but it can tell me, okay, it's probably gonna look about uh, $2,200 for everything, including your P&I, taxes, insurance, and your HOA. You're gonna to have to bring $90,000 to the closing table. So this is a great thing to have with buyers because every home we look at that's different um, can really just show them, okay, you can't afford this, or yeah, we can't afford this, we can bump this up, and it's really, really helpful. So say we're looking at that home, okay, that looks great, but we found another home now that is $406,000. All the same apply, we're gonna put 20% down. Now let's see how much that brings it up. Just a little bit in your monthly payments, not a ton, but you're gonna bring another, you know, a thousand, 500 bucks to the closing table. So this is a really big help with buyers. When we're in properties, before we're thinking about making an offer, let's just plug in these numbers and see what it's gonna look like and see if we can actually afford it. So a great, great app. And then switching over to sellers is even better. For sellers, once I run the comps and I come and meet you and we look at the house and I say, okay, we can sell your home for $500,000, no problem. Okay, we've got broker fee in there of 6%, which is standard. Um, repairs, you might need, you know, say $1,500 for repairs that I think that you might need to put into the bathroom. Miscellaneous, let's put another $1,000 in there, just things that might come up in inspection, different stuff like that. On your loan, how much is left on your loan currently? Say it's $267,000. So that's left on your loan. Um, we're gonna close on the 19th and let's compute that there. Boom, then that brings up all your figures of what you're gonna net at the closing table. So we've gone through what we're gonna sell it for, 500,000, what's left on your loan, 267,000, and then all the closing costs combined with the tax, and the closing cost is around about 38, uh, close to $39,000. And we can look at details, then you're gonna take home 194,233 dollars. Now. Let's say we lowballed that. Let's see that we can sell it for two hundred and six, uh, five hundred and sixty thousand. So let's compute that. Boom. Then you're going to walk away with two hundred and fifty G's in your back pocket after the transaction. So this is an awesome app for taking to sellers' presentations. When I meet sellers at first, we can just dial in the number straight away because the biggest question sellers always have is how much can I make on this house? How much can I walk away with? And this app really, really helps with that. So your real estate agent or your realtor can get it through a title rep. So just get them to get in touch with a title rep. I think it costs like a dollar a month or something like that. So get them to have that on their phone when you are starting to work with them. So those are the five apps that I recommend having on your phone or at least your agent's phone for everything. Zillow, Compass, HomeSnap for searching for homes, all the little different intricacies that those three apps have. Use them to search for everything, to connect with your agent. Neighborhoods app, you can pull it up, you can look at the different little pockets of Denver or whichever city you're in to see what the average price per square foot is, see what's sold recently and all that great stuff, see what the school scores are like. And then the Agent One app is gonna be able to look at numbers, the finances in everything if you're buying or selling, break down all those numbers, give you a clear vision of what it's gonna look like to buy or sell 
at home. So there you go. Those are the five apps that I think you should have on your phone or at least your agent should um, when you're on your real estate journey. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back next week with more videos on tips and tricks for buyers, sellers and investors. If you haven't done already, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, do all that jazz and I will see you next week. Thank you.